Over the last 20 years, the Red Sox have dominated not only the AL East, but they've dominated all of baseball. We've seen several World Series teams coming from Boston with a lot of elite players. But we all know the story of the last few seasons. You win a World Series in 2018. After 2018, you kind of begin a rebuild. You trade away Mookie Betts in 2020, and then proceed to make it into the ALCS in 2021. But then you miss out on the playoffs for 2022 and 2023. The Red Sox ownership has taken a lot of criticism as of recent from fans specifically, but they recently did make a move that shows that the ownership wants to win, and they fired Heim Bloom. The reasoning behind it was because they need to be in October playing meaningful baseball, and I agree, right? Thanks to Heim Bloom and Dave Dombrowski, the Red Sox have an awesome core of the future, but Heim Bloom was unable to go ahead and secure a great product on the field. Bloom has built a top farm system in baseball with guys rising up the minor league systems. The issue is, is that Heim tried to make the big market Red Sox function like they were the small market Rays. And as we learn, it just doesn't work at all. Throughout his time, he let pretty much every free agent on the Red Sox go outside of Rafael Devers. Of course, he did extend him before he hit free agency. The Red Sox had a lot of bright spots in 2023, but they had more holes than they did bright spots. The bright spots were mainly all in the lineup. You had a first baseman in Tristan Casas who broke out, outfielder Masataki Yoshida who had a pretty good rookie year. We saw several other outfielders play great for the Red Sox with Jaron Duran, Willier Abreu, and more. On the pitching side of things, the Red Sox struggled really, really bad, but there were still several bright spots for young guys who broke out. We saw Cutter Crawford emerge as a pretty good starter, as well as top pitching prospect Brian Bayo ending up breaking out. And of course you got Josh Winkowski who broke out in the bullpen as a long reliever. So there was a few bright spots, but the Red Sox lacked top pitching talent all season long. This offseason is going to be filled with starting pitching specifically, but that also means that there's going to be several other teams that try to go after starting pitching. So what do the Red Sox do? The ownership has shown that they're willing to spend money up until the luxury tax, and luckily for the Red Sox, they have a lot of money to work with in this offseason. First things first, let's establish what the Red Sox have right now. They have a manager in Alex Cora, who of course has shown that he's able to lead a team. At catcher, you got Connor Wong, of course we already went over a few other guys like Tristan Casas, Rafael Devers, shortstop you have Trevor Story. Really the only thing that you lack in your lineup right now is a true second baseman, which reports have already came out from the Red Sox basically saying they will not be spending on a second baseman. Their reason is that you already have a top infield prospect in Marcelo Mayer moving up the system. So why spend big money on an infielder when you have Marcelo Mayer coming up? So there will not be a big signing from the Red Sox at second. But what happens in 2024 at second base while Mayer is still trying to, of course, move up the system? So what I think you have to do is you have to have a mix of Emmanuel Valdez and Pablo Reyes. Therefore, you get good play at second while you wait for Marcelo Mayer to come up into the big leagues. Then in the outfield, the best case scenario is Jaron Duran in left field, Zidane Rafaela in center, and Willier Abreu in right field. Now, I could see Sedane Raffaella even playing second base some games, and the games that he does, maybe you end up re-signing Adam Duvall, and Duvall plays center field. That could work. And then, of course, you go ahead and move Masataka Yoshida over to DH. Just like that, your lineup is complete, and ultimately, it would be a lefty-dominant lineup that absolutely mashes, right? Ultimately, to me, that sounds like a plan. So now that we have the lineup complete, let's get the pitching complete. I think you clearly lack a 1-2 and two starter, and my solution is you go ahead and put Brian Bayo as your third guy, Chris Sale as your fourth, and Cutter Crawford as your fifth. It's a really good back end of your rotation filled with good arms, but again, to win in this league, you need two top guys who can anchor it down in the postseason and in the regular season. So how do we address it? Well, I think the one spot is actually very, very simple for the Red Sox. They've made it clear that they plan on addressing specifically starting pitching in this offseason. They said it, of course, in the last press conference to end the season. So what do you do? You spend big money on a starter in Yoshi Yamamoto. He had a 121 ERA in Japan and is really the ideal guy that the Red Sox should go after. I think he's everything that the Boston Red Sox could possibly want, right? He's an arm who is young, he's only 25 years old, therefore he fits that description. He's very, very good, 
Plus, they signed Masataka Yoshida last offseason to a record contract, and many believe right now that Yoshida could be a very positive lure for the Red Sox to land Yamamoto. I would personally be all for it as a Red Sox fan. So now you have your one starter. The question becomes, who is that two starter actually going to be? Well, ultimately, I think you could go ahead and do multiple different things with this, right? Whether it's a trade or a signing, if Boston signed anyone as their two starter, it should be Aaron Nola, right? Nola is a proven starter in the postseason especially, and gives you good innings and good quality of work. But if you choose the trade route, which I think is more likely, you could go Shane Bieber from the Guardians or Corbin Burns from the Brewers. Out of your options of Bieber, Burns, and Nola, I think you have to go ahead and trade for Burns and extend him. I love Aaron Nola, and I would have said Aaron Nola, but if the Red Sox get Yamamoto, the Dodgers, or really any other big market team, is for sure going to throw all their money at Aaron Nola. Therefore, I just don't see the Red Sox spending too, too big on Nola like that. So instead, you go ahead and make a trade, throw a few prospects in there, maybe even an Alex Verdugo in there, and voila, that trade is complete. You now have one of the best rotations, right? Anyways, that's pretty much all. I think that is a very good offseason. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already, and peace out.